603, October 30th, workshop. Call to order. Roll call, please. Early? Here. Here. Oh. <laughs> Here. 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 And a moment before we start, um, not having had Mr. Seaman for two weeks, we hope the best for him. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming is, that he's on the road to recovery, but what is he um, doing? Know, his what fever's gone, but he has no energy, so he has full blown. Wow! <laughs> oh wow! Is he staying home and staying down? I hope. I, don't I hope. Know. He just said he has no energy. Mm. Uh, I guess no. it's it's dangerous. It can. Yeah. So okay, I think I'll let um, whoever wants to. Guide us if that's Miss McNeese or Miss Vincent on <laughs> the sequence. So we have three elements um, in the queue plan administration, um, lifelong learning, which is really public schools kind of retooled, um, and then transportation. So uh, I don't know that there's an order of preference for us. If there's something that you want to. We can look at this and see. Tackle first. Um, <laughs> Before we tackle, it, it does appear to me that perhaps I'll just use an example, lifelong learning objective and elements, that some of this might be outside our lane. That's what we do and the that, education then, plan. <laughs> that, and Never then, therefore, <laughs> maybe we would get some guidance on how much we, how deep we want to get into it and how relevant our comment is on this so that we can be effective on what our lane is and mm -hmm. then not get outside that and you can take that lead okay that's fine no child left behind <laughs> <laughs> do you want to yeah do yeah what i mean which element do you i, I think transportation is probably the heaviest yeah. lift right now so if we want to expend our energy early on transportation okay. and mm -hmm. then see how we feel the thinnest document happens to be there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested. Okay, you got that. I'm, I'm all in well, for that. Well, maybe it's only gets heavy for me. It's yeah. just not not my strongest area, which is why we have Caroline. <laughs> ah. So. And then I'll speak for staff. We've been successful with everyone focusing on the clean version, mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps we should use that. So I believe last time you just started... Uh, at the top and mm -hmm. we do have to slide up that Goal one. summarizes what's been done. On 1.1, just the first thing that I'm seeing is, I'm going to focus on the word minimize. Has there already been some type of an evaluation study to determine options? Or should we say evaluate and minimize or evaluate to minimize? I don't know. Is, has there been any evaluation done by outside consultants for us on that topic? <clears throat> I'm, I'm not. I'm. I'm not understanding. The Are you talking about the first bullet? Yeah, the first bullet. Are you talking about like a traffic study. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't know. It. I mean, to me, that when I see this, so, traffic-related deaths. So, so we coordinate very closely with the regional, with the MPO, MPO, yeah, um, and you know, Ford Pinellas. Yeah. They really are the transportation planning umbrella for the area. So, a lot of what we do. Correct me and jump in if any time, Caroline is really um, responding and working with their data and information. They are kind of the clearinghouse for, you know, for the data around, you know, transportation planning. So we don't have a separate transportation plan. The, we do have... We rely on other agency we, sources. We do, with the exception of, I mean, we do have a multimodal transportation district that was put in place back in 
the you know the mid um, 2000s and we had an initial quality of service analysis um, and all that was done to support the smart code and CRA uh, plan that was put in place and for the sponge docs so um, that's a focus for us is to move that further move the needle on that update it and um, and try to continue to you know to implement you know improvements in that and that that really is not just looking at it's it's really shifting the emphasis to bike pedestrian and um, uh, transit even that it might be micro transit it could be a circulator so that's the the the, the focus of the MMTD for us because um, I don't know if I answered your question. No, you, okay. you did. I, I didn't hear DOT in that because we have US 19 that falls within our city. Yeah, they're definitely yeah they're definitely a coordinating agency okay. as well. What is transportation equity? So transportation equity um, <clears throat> is it really gets at, it's it's pretty much what it sounds like. Um, so. In our current transportation system, pedestrians, transit riders, cyclists are not given the same amount of resources or the same amount of safety okay. that people driving cars are. So, okay. so making sure mm -hmm. all, they're all considered equal in terms of their usage and availability? or um, Well, it's kind of like that picture. I don't know if you see in the picture. It, sometimes things being equal... Yeah. Isn't yeah. really yeah. equity. Oh, I know what you're talking about like yeah. the kids on the step. Equal could be yeah. that relatively <laughs> right. equal. This one's equal, but this one here is actually got and they're equal, but they're relative to and one another. Right. I, I mean, for instance, like if we spent as much money on car infrastructure as on transit, we'd yeah. have a pretty good transit okay. system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but you know, if we spent the same amount of money we spent on car infrastructure on just sidewalks, well. Gosh, we'd have a whole lot of sidewalks, but that it, that equality wouldn't really meet that equity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do we have safe street principles built into the plan currently or proposed? We do. In, in the existing comp plan, we do. Mm -hmm. And then um, the board did um, sign on to the safe street Pinellas plan, mm -hmm. which Ford Pinellas put out. So. Thank you. Policy 1.1.9, coordinate with FDOT Pinellas County and Ford Pinellas to mitigate anticipated impacts of redevelopment within the MMTD on the strategic intermodal system. What does that consist of? Meaning? So what, what this gets at, and I'm reading that, that does sound like a, a lot of planner talk. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, we we all know that US 19, you know, is not great and needs something done to it and that there's been plans for years and years um, to upgrade in, in Tarpon Springs um, as it is part of the strategic intermodal system. Yeah. Um, and part of that, um, so our, our multimodal transportation district part of 19 falls in that so it would be coordinating you know land use planning and and, and transportation planning and all, all the kind of planning that needs to go into it as we're moving on that the and I think the original kind of impetus for this I don't think this is it this is not a new policy I don't believe no, it's not. so the again when we put the multimodal transportation district in place um, at that point in time we still had hard concurrency for transportation planning so the MMTD was created uh, and approved by the state uh, in coordination with um, the various agencies. We recognize that in order for the community redevelopment area to be successful, that we had to address and we had to kind of bump up density and intensity to promote redevelopment within the CRA. And the only way that we could do that was through this adopting a multimodal transportation district that looked at those impacts 
and how to mitigate for those things uh, because ultimately everything that we do is within a quarter mile of a state or with, of a state highway. So <laughs> you, the, we automatically were getting basically, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. So the multimodal transportation district was one way to do that, to look at these alternative levels of service for bike, for ped, for transit, um, as well as also recognizing that we had, you know, street segments within the MMTD that could be completed anything that you could do that would take could take any trips off of US 19 and keep them local versus having to get on 19 so that was kind of the impetus for okay. so that's what that really was kind of talking about Makes sense. so go one has several long pages of objectives so I this just to clarify so I I'll just say hey let's um, Focus on objective 1.1 up to 1.2 and see if anybody has any more comments or questions in regards. And that's pretty much just page one. I have no more questions. Then we can go to page two and objective 1.2 under goal one. Before we move on, for that last part for 1.1.10. Um, you know, I'm just, this is the, over between the old Winn-Dixie and, okay. Is, it, is there any plans within this to, I don't know, make that safer? Because it's super dangerous, right, as it is right now. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Are you talking about? I'm not sure if you're talking about this part extends This is talking to, about, yeah, making the connection actually, between yeah. okay. Belcher at Clos you know, where Belcher Road kind of dead ends into Klosterman, then it turns into Diston. Okay, that's, we've over, got, that's yeah. further down then. Yeah. Okay, so you're talking, but what are you talking about? Just I'm so talking about, so I'm not, because I'm not sure which roads they are as far as which state and, you know, mm -hmm. where they all combine there. Um, but in between the old Winn-Dixie Complex and the new Winn-Dixie Complex, and like where Roadies is and the right. bank. Right, right. Where there's like four lanes. Yes. And yeah, then there's like two right. entrances. A couple of and there's a oh. bunch of accidents that are happening yeah. within... Hmm. Within that, I don't know if that has anything like where that ties into this. Like people want to turn into Win Dixie, but the first inkling is to turn into Dunkin' Donuts, which There's is no the like choice. Yeah, median to like stop you from oh, I, yeah, turning anywhere. That, anyway that you segment want. of I, th I think you're talking about the segment of uh, of Mears from right. Alt 19 to right. Safford. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mango's that later, but yeah. yeah, we can we can at least I, I mean that's our local road, I believe. So. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if that. Yeah. Had any, yeah. We mm -hmm. can. We can at least, you know, I think bring just it up like some like our mediums powers. so that yeah. so people can not turn. Yeah. You can just shoot across yeah. all four. You lines. can, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You definitely have to kind of have your head on a swivel going through there. But now that the lady brought attention to policy one point one point one zero, and the wording is accurate, but one has to have a picture of what's going on there. Mm. It sounds like what that paragraph says is that there is an intent or a goal to make a connection yeah. from what is now a stop as you're heading north on, easier to just call it Belcher, yes, <laughs> to cut through what is now those piles of, right, and, and make a connection there. So the, the goal is to make a connection there. There's been lots of plans for that. Is that how I read that? There, and at a minimum, it would be a 12-foot bike path. Where So we we had, I don't know if y'all were tuned into this or not, we did um, over over a year ago, we conduct, We had a consultant, um, was, uh, Kimley Horn, that worked with both sides of the, of the, of the gap. And they, we evaluated just some initial um, complete streets options for the, for the distant quarter at large. One piece of that, obviously, is the gap piece. And, you know, that the policy decision of whether or not to make the connection, you know, and make distant go all the way through um, is, is an open one at this point. Um, we had a lot of good community input into you know what could happen there ultimately you know there needs to be a lot of environmental analysis because there's wetlands there we're not you know so we're, we're still at the beginning stages but there's been a policy in the comp plan 
for a long time to at one point it was you know make the connection it's been softened over time to evaluate it for the right type of connection and i think that's the context sensitiveness of it you know it certainly would help with emergency services if that is yeah. possible because right now you've got you know our routing for you know so so there's a lot of positives but you also then have just the impact on residents you know that you know there are plenty of people that don't want it right. so so it's an eval it, it's in an evaluation state essentially so okay so so they, they've done that study they've done an initial complete streets um it's a concept <clears throat> plan it's in that is on that on, that's on connect tarpon isn't it Still yeah, is. I yeah. think so. I yeah. think so. There's a project page on Connect Target. The reason why I'm asking you if it has, I'm, I'm wondering, thinking about, because you made it, the emergency service sector, which is police, fire, ambulance, did they consider an option of actually building that connection and then let, have it shut off? That, that's, so that some of the, that's some of the options are, that have been explored, but at this point, it's all very conceptual, and I don't think there's a, we don't have absolute policy direction to go forward with it at this point. Um, does Diston Avenue run on the Diston Ridge? The, the, you don't know? I didn't know there's a ridge. So there's an there's a old ge geological feature that runs from Gulfport all the way up to mm. Tarpon. Oh, called hmm. the Diston Ridge. How do you know that? That's amazing. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that it's related. No, but okay. I think. But it, I mean, I, you know, our local Diston is more of a. It's just the, old the road. Flat name okay, I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it might, but, but it, it runs. It, it runs the length of Pinellas. Yeah. Guy yeah. Owned a whole bunch of mm -hmm. County yeah. And I think there's a that's that's why. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Lots of stuff named after Diston. Mm hmm. But I didn't know about a distance. I didn't know the bridge. bridge. There is, there is. It's, sure. Yeah. Uh, if I may, a couple more questions. I'll try and keep them short. Mr. Zimbellis was not not in his head that you were fully aware of that study. This PNZ member so, went right by me. Was it purely Board of Commissioners? So we, re the city received a multimodal, not a multimodal, a complete streets. Thank you. A complete streets grant from Forward Pinellas to evaluate the distant corridor from a complete streets concept. Not, so looking also at what can be done to enhance the existing distant, you know, north-south for safety, sidewalks, things of that nature, as well as an initial evaluation of the gap. And um, so yes, that's, that study was done, like I said, it may, maybe even almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. was. That was yeah. my first day. Right. Was the planning and zoning up two years ago? I, I don't know that they... No. You, I've been on it a long, no, long I, I, time. No, it didn't. I mean, we the study did, a, a, yeah, it didn't, or you know, the concept plans, that, you know, didn't specifically come to the planning and zoning board. Um, and nothing, honestly, was adopted. It was kind of like a receive and file, almost, of, of the mm -hmm. findings. So... That being said, do you think wording might, you might want to change the wording a little bit? Because since there has been a study, can we actually say something about reevaluating the study? We could be even further than that. Yeah. But before we were there, if you didn't mind, um, since there was a conversation about our partner just south of Distant Curlew there, which is the St. Pete College, mm -hmm. did they participate in that their study? Since that would be gr one of the they greatest were. values of attaching our communities directly it, to mm -hmm. the right. college that mm -hmm. I had no right. idea were part of our lines. community. Yeah. <laughs> so then just for well, emphasis, were, because I'm humorous, they, how bizarre that we don't have a direct street to the college <laughs> that is within our community. Mm -hmm. we, we recognize all of that. I don't know if St. Pete College was a, was a stakeholder outright when we when the study was done. Then that um, study is flawed. So well, the good news is is that we did bring that up. Yeah. yeah, and and the good news is is that we have a grant coming down the pipeline at some point for a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. What a great conversation. So if. Mr. Zimbellis maybe thought he could put stronger wording together. I would take yeah. from continue to evaluate a context sensitive to let's just make this happen. Yeah, prioritize 
a decision. I think it's a no-brainer. I think it was so evident. It's definitely what yeah. the community wants. <laughs> Maybe well, there's there's some that do not. Oh, that's, yeah. There are uh, some that yeah, do not. Yeah, not in my front yard <coughs> type of thing. But when oh. my neighbor was killed in that accident going into Anderson Park, oh. the, the resulting traffic for yes. everyone, north, south, east, and was west, awful. there was a you know yeah. a cascade effect to that. And because it was closed for an extended amount of time for the investigation, but... Uh, it's just it, to me, it's a no-brainer just for emergency services. Much no, less. Emergency services. Now we're not the BOC or others, and of course, there's always those that would say not in my backyard, or there's those that are against it. But there's only about 16 houses along that road. There's a 100-foot yeah. Duke easement to mm -hmm. the west, mm -hmm. and sometimes adults have to be adults and say this is the best thing for our community. And yeah. yes, it's going to sting a little bit, but it's the right thing. Yeah. So. Can we say evaluate and prioritize yep. a context sense? Well, it sounds like it's been evaluated mm -hmm. more than once. Or update the evaluation and, I, and I prioritize. I think what, what's really lacking at this point is like actual engineering data. Like oh. we don't, because of the landfill yeah. being there, right. we don't even know like what if it's cost it's feasible. That includes further study to be performed. Somehow worded sure. that that is a objective right now it's just to say continue well, it was just to evaluate. Evaluate. It'll, it'll linger it'll linger we're leaving it in linger language even with more <laughs> evaluate we're just really saying well let's just keep talking about this great right. idea well especially but, if folks um, perform a accident perform and remember that day where everyone took four hours to get home yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. yeah conduct a feasibility a study and prioritize yeah. a context sensitive all right and establish priority yeah yeah, yeah. Nice guy. Great guy. Oh. Loved his dog. Dog in and out. Four different parks every day. Wow. Yeah, that, was his, that was a good topic. I'm, so I'm not done. Back to, oh, oh okay. golly, I know. Right, so okay. painful. But this is such a, a great topic. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I would l think that somehow making a link to St. Petersburg College yeah. mm -hmm. is what's being missed in this entire item. Of course, safety is important. Access is important. But the fact that we have our college mm -hmm. that's part of the community that cannot be directly accessed by the community that arguably needs it most is a flaw. And I don't know how that we can encourage them as a stakeholder to help maybe drive that process. One, one of the things now, I don't, we haven't, really sprinkled it throughout but you know you have goals objectives and policies but then underneath the policies you can have strategies and so this might be a place a where we want yeah. to we want to put some bullet items as strategies mm -hmm. da, 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 through the following strategies mm -hmm. and, i like that strategy. we'll, yeah. yeah perfect <laughs> i like we'll, that strategy we'll, i do too that is and, a good and you know, making the connection to st pete college certainly would be one of those and so. i like the idea that you said sprinkle it so it may not just be here though yeah. we'll put it in the yeah. lifelong learning element yeah. as well so. yeah there well, you go yeah, yeah i think so it, it may already might, be, might already be it may already be there mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we're changing mm. education right now <laughs> thank you for indulging me so long on that that, that could be a significant one too joanne mm -hmm. really yeah. <laughs> objective 1.2 That's page two, and then a s several pages of diagrams. Two pages, three pages. Can you, while they're digesting, can you take a swing at explaining how we can influence the design of Alt-19 going forward and this was something that the consultants talked about. If we have certain policies, oh right. Um, um, so yeah, if we have very specific things uh, in our comprehensive plan, like these diagrams, which is one of the reasons why Renee so in here. <laughs> kept them in here. Um, if we have, <clears throat> so when FDOT does do um, the upgrade of 
US 19 or alt 19 for that fact matter they're they're going to be using federal funds so they have to look at the the existing plans of the community so mm -hmm. it gives us a little bit more leverage to influence design agree and all of these examples are out of the um, they're all smart code examples mm -hmm. and they all have trees <laughs> Love them or hate them. Real trees, <laughs> not palm trees, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so I have got a couple. Uh, just one. I'll start with this. That policy one dot two dot two. You know, when I read it, it it's re required bicycle lanes to be constructed where technically feasible as part of the new road construction or resurfacing. So that's a pretty broad term. That means just about any construction on any roads in the city, whether it's city, state, mm -hmm. or, or county, or resurfacing. But what I see missing on this, and again, it just could be that I don't know enough about, this is being done, the objective is require, which is you're going to mandate a bicycle lane to be constructed where technically feasible. I'm seeing the word, I don't see the word safety in this. Uh, <laughs> is that part of so, technical feasibility? I, I was no, going to say it, sure. sh it should be because um, there are, when you look at your MUTCD, mm -hmm. um, it has standard widths. Um, because I know it's something that we've struggled with um, on Gulf Boulevard, you know, out, out on the beaches because there's nowhere to widen the road. Right. You know, so there's no curbs, there's no sidewalks, there's just road and a pedestrian and bicycle lanes that are all even straight across, mm -hmm. right? And they have to be specific widths. So you yeah. have to give them, you know, you have like maybe a couple inches leeway. But I think that's where you get into the te technical feasibility, feasibility right. of it is you have to have the available amount of roadway to accommodate bike lanes and however many traffic lanes you need. And sometimes that can be based, I think, on um, traffic engineering studies that tell you how much volume you have for vehicles. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the space for the, ve the bike lane, then you don't have to put it in, right? But, right. Yeah, but, but there, there's, a, there's an argument to be made that <clears throat> being from the DOT <clears throat> and serving the DOT, that you can do those feasibility studies and you can follow the design standards, both state, federal, and you mm -hmm. can do the MUTCD guidelines. But even if it says you can, should you? The should traffic you? volume yeah. and the accident levels on that particular mm -hmm. corridor makes it a high risk. Yeah, and I think corridor. that should be taken into consideration. <laughs> yeah, well, so I, that's it, why it I'll, should. But it, but that word technically yeah. doesn't. Imp if you looked at it in DOT terms, it doesn't talk about safety. It's well, technically, right. is it, can it be engineered and meet the standards? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can it be engineered per the design standards applicable? I think actually F dot in the new green book does have um, standards that take into all of those things into account. Like, so there's a matrix of volume um, of the roadway, the speed mm -hmm. of the roadway, the actual Accident design history, speed. Pedestrian so, astro a pedestrian or bicycle accidents. And if, if we added something on here that that says, you know, with the uh, with the highest priority on safety, yeah. Yeah. something yeah. like yeah. that. As long as you yeah. say yeah. that, then yeah. sure. any engineer yeah. or any politician yeah. that wants this to happen in their area is going to realize that, okay, it may be able to do it engineering-wise, yeah. but safety has to be an emphasis. I mean, yeah. Did some bicycle lanes definitely. Come, come up on US 19 oh, and it was like, what? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah they yeah. have them. And, and the they design standard will allow it, given the lanes. And the, they do? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they're tough. still there or not. No, there's some that are still there. Some that are still there. I'm, I'm glad Ms. Cardish brought up Gulf Boulevard, though, because mm. what a smashing success. <laughs> In my opinion, I used to ride and walk down there in mm. 2000 and 2001, and you can go down there now. And is it tight? Yes. Is everyone living together, and is it safe, and can you do it and not ride in that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I haven't been down there in a long Nobody time. Nobody might agree with me, but yeah. I used to spend a lot of time on my bike down there. And it, For the it, moment, it is, I thought you were, being, you were being comical with saying I did a too. smashing success. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Like, yeah. Smashes down there, or... <laughs> I thought the 
same thing. Oh, shucks. Sure. <laughs> he, he must have been buzzed at the time that he was walking the bicycle. Like I'm only now actually starting to embrace your sense of humor, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then it would be perfect time to think, say, that this is a great document. <laughs> um, I have another one, hmm? if no one else has one. Uh, policy 1.2.7, maintain the wayfinding signage system for the sponge docks area in the downtown district. Um, I'm not, this is just my personal opinion, I, I'm not personally convinced that what we have is, is in my opinion, sufficient or up to date. It's so, mm -hmm. so maybe the word maintain should be evaluate yeah. and improve mm -hmm. and improve because mm -hmm. the, I mean, technology is changing things quickly about how we can get from point A to point B with information. Now the signs are there, mm -hmm. but sometimes let's let's have an open open mind that there may be something that's even more. I've seen now that they've got kiosk centers mm -hmm. in cities. Mm -hmm. You can basically they'll give you a virtual tour. You can stop and you can mm -hmm. you know, just the word maintain says keep it as it is. You can do yeah, evaluate or like yeah. maintain and improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there yep. you go. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for like more branding on the signs or just more clarity? More clarity and more simplicity on how to okay. get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. I know you see the signs and they'll mm -hmm. tell you that, you know, if maybe that means I've got to follow those signs and see where the next one's going to be. And well, yeah, and then the sponge docks and downtown, and sometimes it'll have too many um, things on there, like, you know, Sunset Beach and downtown. Like, then it's right. too confusing yeah. when you're not looking for yeah. that yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at that point. Especially while you're moving. Clarity. Clarity as well as being able to understand that to expect it tells you there's an arrow, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to improve functionality. Yeah, yeah. Or evaluate on the base. Yeah, use the word evaluate mm -hmm. because that's a yeah. Leads the person doing it to something like, yeah, and evaluate mm -hmm. the wayfinding and signing system for the sponge docks area in the downtown district in order to improve functionality and clarity, something like that. Mm-hmm. We're not planning any roundabouts, are we? If I get my way, we are. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, I love them. Caroline? I said, if I get my way, we are. I'll tell you yeah, what. You like them? I love yeah. them. Yeah. Love them. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody dies in them. That's what I love about them. And they keep traffic moving. Yep. And the they also recently, work after a hurricane. Recently after. <laughs> <laughs> have, you been to the, have you been to the one in Palm Harbor? Mm-hmm. Well, that's new. It's going to take a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like Clearwater Beach had one, and they were well, up the in arms. Well, the one only one lane, right? So that yeah. is tolerable, you know. Yeah. And that's yeah. okay. But when you get a roundabout that has two lanes, I mean, uh, yeah, like those, those get harder. It gets yeah. harder. Yeah. Are you saying that we're not smarter than Europeans, though? I mean, because <laughs> 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 they I use them all the time. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I live in the land of roundabouts. Do you? <laughs> yes. Clearwater? No. No, Sarasota. They're, yep. they're, yeah. Yeah. they're everywhere. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're everywhere. Uh, they're all over the place. Yeah. You like them? Um, they do keep traffic moving, so you're not stopping at lights, and they are traffic calming. Mm -hmm. yes. um, it's retraining people. Yeah is the mm -hmm. big part of it because everybody is so used to the lights and stopping and, you know, and uh, it's just a different brain pattern, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I hate them. <laughs> You'll get used to them. <laughs> how long have you, how long have you been there? Well, I had them where I was. I hated them there, too. Really? Mm. So I mostly uh, hate the two-lane ones because they are very confusing. They are, it, yeah. It's it's yeah, you got to know which lane to get into, and if you it's miss harder. it, yeah, they, yeah, those are harder, but, you know. Yeah. But the one lane on yeah. 1.2.8 would provide pedestrian crosswalks as part of resurfacing new construction projects and new look, just crosswalks in general. I've noticed that, you know, when we, we put them up in places like downtown, you know, their the traffic is more congested there and people are more aware, so they're more useful there. But, you know, we have them sometimes like around the bayou. Mm -hmm. uh, where we don't have stop signs and traffic is going full, you know, 30, 35 miles an hour. And they, 
there's just no concern, and I still don't know how, how these get through or what group they go through, or they, whether it goes TRC, all of a sudden they're just up, and I've written the city, Mark, and everybody about them, and I just get no response of what group this has gone through. And specifically, the one around the bayou that I'm talking about is because it, when you see a crosswalk, you think it's safe to cross, and there is in no way is it safe to cross in some of these areas where traffic is going 35 miles an hour. Mm. There's no lights, like there are downtown, where there's no risk of... <laughs> Of car moving that fast, right. and now you're telling people and that it's safe to walk to mm -hmm. cross here. And then when we yes. added the stop sign around the bayou, then it was like, well, we have to put the stop sign because we put the crosswalk. But then we put two crosswalks on a curve on a blind you're spot. Pappas's Lucas Pappas's old house, house. yeah, yeah that's the court. dangerous. Right, at the end of the bayou, you can't see. You can't see. And, and I run there all the time. I would never cross there running. And now you're telling people it's safe to walk here, and it is not safe. You to know walk where the there. Victoria House is, Victoria. Mm -hmm house that Victorian, if you were going west, or even south, anyway, uh, yeah. anyway <laughs> it's on the curb. Mm -hmm. So someone who wants to cross there and is on the opposite side coming into town, yeah. they would never see the car. That car that's coming toward Howard Park, going toward mm -hmm. Howard Park, they wouldn't see that person. Is that Was that Project Admin? Yes. Okay. Well, and, and we, there's even the house. There's a car that actually drives. Uh, someone had it on camera that drove right through the stop sign into, like, the bayou, <laughs> missing it entirely. So, and that was just missing the whole stop sign in general. But, um, yeah, and I got Good no point. clear answer as to how those crosswalks went up with no. And yet, the argument was that when we had to put the stop sign, so there's five stop signs around by Orange Street in, in Spring Bayou, was that well, if we put the crosswalk up. We have to put a stop sign. But then we put two crosswalks and no stop signs in the most mm. dangerous like area that should never be crossed. Has anybody reached out to um, to uh, the police department? And I did, and, okay. and apparently Officer Boone does that, which I don't... I mean, I love Officer Boone for crime prevention, but like, there's just this weird roundabout through traffic studies that's just apparently, from what, from what I've learned, if you... Just complain enough. One person can complain enough and get two stop signs put on Grand Boulevard. So, yeah, I don't know the history of, of, <laughs> of what went on. You know, but it, it was a city project. You know, project admin. You know, but I, there's the, no but way I to figure know. out what group is who's yeah. who is um, uh, vetting these things for safety. Mm -hmm. There's just there's no safety vetting at all. And and, and, and I'm going to add to yours because it makes a lot of sense. Even on Tarpon Avenue, from Pinellas Avenue, going. East, we have three crosswalks in a short segment. Yeah. Whereas people can actually walk one crosswalk, they would walk either direction on a sidewalk to go to the one at the railroad track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one has a history. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it proceeds. Yeah, no, that. Um, and, but even those have lights. But the, one, yeah. the other ones that are on the 35 yeah. mile an hour roadway don't have mm -hmm. lights or anything. What it it's does, just... though, because it has the lights and, they, and the person pushes it, yep. it's now creating a traffic jam in a way. I mean, I, you know, I, I will say this the city has, you know, an engineer of record that, you know, I assume I was involved it. in. The, well, you know, but the that's kind of my point is that, things that in, all these you know, things so. like are going through, but there's really no, I have never been provided a clear answer on who mm. provides a safety evaluation and, and where the public input gets into that safety evaluation. There's no public so, hearings right, for any so, of these things. Um, if we add some sort of a policy in here, and I don't know how this implements itself, but I'm certainly willing to put in a policy that basically says that, you know, um, Crosswalks. New crosswalks, you know, must well, be evaluated. Crosswalk, you know, locations must be evaluated for safety and something, something. I'm trying to think of, you know, am I? Yeah. Safety well, and practicality. Why you guys are all thinking, I, I, I got for, lost like, I mean, on this. What was the, what was the, I mean, well, what was the, the policy that you had brought up? It's the one. I mean, fundamentally, who 1.2.8. Thank you. Okay. No. Okay, so there's some concern I mean, that they're in, internal, I guess, not working right, internal. how they get done, and you're thinking that maybe that could be adjusted in a way to address that concern. Yeah, I well, think for safety purposes. Yeah, for I safety. Mean, yeah. You should have both the fire department and um, the police department weigh, on, weigh in on certain things. I mean, for, I'm going to go out and say that I think that they were fully involved right. in that, mm -hmm. but yeah. I was not myself personally involved in it, so I can't state that with 100% certainty, but... Typically, you know, anything like that would have had public works, police, fire, 
everybody looking at it um, prior to its to, prior to the installation going in. I don't know what drove that project. Suggestion on how you'd like it to read, or a well, suggestion be, I on mean, policy? I, because I need to know, well, it's fair to the residents and the people that live around there to know how to have some input into these things going through. Because it's not just crosswalks; it's also stop signs. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not. It, I, I know how the, these stop signs come about, and it's not, they go through, they might go through those things, but it comes from a complaint from a resident, but that is not necessarily uh, talked to around the other residents. Understand. So somebody I wants understand. to stop, a stop I'm, sign I'm here, interrupt. and then I'm the so neighbors. I'm so sorry. Is, is that relevant, right, how stop signs get put up? I don't know well, if Well, I was saying of... in reference to crosswalks, because crosswalks yeah, have to sometimes be by, okay. by stop signs. So. And in the terms of right. public, this is transportation, and transportation has to do with public safety, and that's a huge concern in my community. Yeah. To me, so I think it's relevant. So, can you add language that address the issues we just talked about? But I'd also ask if is it possible because what I heard by changing the language a little bit to to evaluate, um, I would be asking to consider not just that we're providing pedestrian crosswalks or evaluating the need for pedestrian crosswalks. The need, as a part of the, um, where did I see it now? There we go. As as a part of resurfacing, or new construction, and I would like to add existing pro roadway too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that they reevaluate some of them that aren't working. Yeah, I mean, just I mean, to me, just to prioritize locations for new crosswalks and the multimodal master. That's just so. That's just saying. That's just a broad. Place. You can just put them anywhere, basically. It's saying mm -hmm. prioritize based on somebody calling in and saying, I'd like a crosswalk here. Um, okay, so I, I do want to get one thing, clarify one thing. Uh, you know that it is legal for a pedestrian to cross at any intersection. Yes, but yeah. they do it at their own risk. They do. Right, yeah. now we're, but, yeah. we're, right now we're it's guiding them to go to the yeah, flashing right. light, yeah, exactly. and the flashing light stops them, and their next one is about 25 feet away. Another one. <laughs> right. So that's why I said. Yeah, that's I, I think I, I think I get the point of there may be a, a saturation of them in a certain area of town. Yes, yeah. I, I, I get it. But um, crosswalks, I think, usually get put in when they it's, um, you know, if you not in, if you build it, they will come. It's a, they're already there. So we need to build it kind of thing. No, because they're. But they're putting them places that haven't been there for four years since. since I, but I think I think Caroline's <laughs> point is, but people are are functionally using the crossing the streets in those areas. But that's why it's not working like that yeah. now. That's but I think point, so, so. Maybe we just need we need to evaluate them in the the plan right. that we're doing. That's, well, it doesn't say evaluate, and, so evaluate and, and, should and be in there. Include that existing, in. existing too. So it's hmm. not just about new. Not just providing them, prioritizing them, but evaluating the, if they're even necessary. Any more questions about uh, objective 1.2 on page two? Um, just briefly on the landscaping policy 1.2.11, is that city landscaping or is that implementing landscaping requirements into your land development code? So I think um, this is targeted towards city okay. doing that, but it's also one of those things that if we have it here, good for when we're dealing with outside Got entities. It. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I would say both. Okay. The policy 12.12, I think it, I know what it means, but it says establish requirements and incentives for bike racks, b bike racks, benches, rest facilities, and lockers. Um, is my thought about the bike racks, is that, um, like rental bike? No, this is really meant to be like a place that if I'm using a bike, I can lock can, my bike you up. Can, yeah. yeah. So that, think, that would yeah. be something I, w I would like yeah. to see in the land development code having bike parking requirements. And yeah. I believe that we have it in the smart code. We don't yeah. have it, I don't Everywhere think, in the land development yeah. code. Do you give parking credits for it currently? Um. I believe we do have a parking credit that if you provide bicycle parking, you can get a reduction in your vehicle, vehicle parking. parking. So we do okay. it as an incentive in the land development code now. Yeah. Okay. I have a question about the benches. Yeah. Um, and the reason I bring it up is I noticed with the influx of homeless 
Mm. Yeah. I remember one time I was sitting at a light on alternate 19 right there by, by, uh, oh, what's the place called where they, where they have the food, the shelter, um, Shepherd Center. Shepherd, Shepherd Center. Center. Thank yeah. you. Anyway, there was a bench, a city bench right to my left. If I'm facing, uh, north, right to my left where that Copenhagen Cafe and all gotcha. that is. Well, it's been removed. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anything about it other than when I saw the bench, I took note of it because I saw a police officer rousting a homeless man that was sleeping on the bench. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why they removed it, maybe. Um, I actually got in a fight with my neighbor because she thought everybody ought to be able to sleep on the benches if they want. And I said, no, I think everybody should be able to sit on the benches if they want. <laughs> but anyway, are we having a problem with I know I know historically that there have been, in certain areas of downtown, there have been problems <coughs> with um, yeah. the unhoused sleeping on. Because it's nice to have those benches. It is. <coughs> it, it's a, it's a push-pull. Yeah. And then what about rest facilities? Are we talking about bathrooms? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean... The Just people that shower at Sunset Beach with phosphates <coughs> and all that. Where stuff. are these going to go? Uh, that's why we would prioritize locations in the multimodal master plan. I mean, uh, like having the public restroom at the the sponge docks. You know, that's a good idea. Mm. It's already there. there yeah. other, I mean, there's just no. We may not there might, really need anything else. <laughs> we might. I don't think there's any place else we're going to put restrooms. I mean, just up on the where we're. But in a deal, yeah, we'll well, if I mean, if there we're going to do this, I mean, the, the, the pickleball yeah. thing, maybe we would need yeah. to look in it. Yeah, you'll. That could also definitely. include things like water fountains and you know. Yeah, we could get. So. We should start with one at Craig Park. But where showers? Where are you going <laughs> to put showers? Don't necessarily have to shower. Showers. No, but not a not a. No, the homeless are taking showers at Sunset Beach. And I don't yeah. want to watch them watching, washing their butt cracks and their balls. Yeah. And I, I don't want to watch that. I get that. that. Um, that's Jordan, are you okay with the But I don't know that we can one, solve two, that with the... No, no, no. <laughs> <It's a plan>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean? I mean it, I yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that part. Yeah, yeah. 1.214. Uh, I'm, I'm totally against actively pursuing a parking garage. That's, like, yeah, really out there. Yeah, the word actively is. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little that strong. One my yeah, <laughs> that is from no that. That's I mean, I think there's a need for parking garage, but it sounds, goes, like like it's a, <clears throat> it sounds like it's supposed to go there at the sponge docks. That's a. That, like the that's mayor a, put this in here. <laughs> that's one of those legacy. That's been in there. It's been in there for a long time. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it can sit in there a long time. Then. You know. Um, yeah. Actively <laughs> pursue. Does not sound. But does that leave it open for a developer who wants to do a parking garage that is a pay parking garage? No one's come forward. There's a likelihood well, that if you did a city one, there, it would be wanted, a paid parking garage, though, too. This to mm -hmm. There's a likelihood if you did a city garage that it would be a paid parking yeah. garage, too, yeah. though. Yeah. So you could reword this to don't say want to see it at the sponge evaluate right. partnerships with private sector to construct. So it's a little Probably, softer than or actively maybe pursuing. Maybe with affordable housing, since they want to be in everything. Okay, I can, I can, I can go anyway. Yeah, you can, private sector and affordable housing. You can build a garage underneath the affordable <laughs> what is a, what is, What's the definition of mobility hub? So that would be going back to our, our equity, our transportation equity. It would have more more modes in it. So it would be... Um, it's not just a parking garage. It could be... Ride you know, share. Excuse. could be ride, ride share. It could be bike okay. rentals. could be, you know... Towers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why? I, I, well, now I'm glad I got understand what that term means. That gives me a little bit more concern because when you put a mobility hub or of various features, yeah, downtown Sponge Dock is already crowded and slow to move from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. I can understand having mm -hmm. something, but maybe it's something that's on the perimeter of right, the Sponge yeah. Docks. It right. says in the Sponge Docks. Well, says, I mean, it's, this is an opportunity thing. What okay. What's available, you know, so I don't know that it needs to be in the center. It could be, like you said, on a on a corner or it could be, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, I yeah. think, you know, the idea being if we can have a central location where people can park or get there from various oh, modes yeah. and then walk and, walk, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. keep the, the vehicles from cruising to deck. <laughs> Do you think it would ever... 
be that they shut that to vehicle traffic? <laughs> No. We've had that discussion yeah. before, um, and no, that's a no. <laughs> it's kind of a hard no, I think. You know, they tried to improve the stormwater drainage in the whole width of the dock, and that went down in mm. a smashing success. <laughs> it drowned. <laughs> Don't make me dredge up bad memories. <laughs> dredge up. Oh, let's just kill these two right now. <laughs> oh. This is the most fun I've had at a planning and zoning board meeting oh. <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh, she has entered your mind. <laughs> the mind melt. Oh. Can I ask a question? What is a transit circulator? So that would be, it, it, it has a, a loop route, like it would have a fixed route um, that kind of runs in a loop. We actually used to have one in Tarpon Springs oh, that, that connected from the downtown to the sponge docks. So it's um, it's not a, it's not taking you outside of Tarpon Springs. It's taking you around mm -hmm. Tarpon Springs. A little Springs. looper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. A roadway. You mean? Yeah. Like well, a, it would be. Like it could be a trolley. No, no, like a jolly trolley. It's type like a, thing. It's, a, oh, it it's a little local jolly trial. Yeah. Oh, nice. Or a okay. jitney. Or a jitney. <laughs> <laughs> or a van down okay. by the river. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, since we've lost two members, <laughs> and we're about to lose a third. Uh, we'll wait for everyone to come back before we like sign off on one, two, and move on to one, three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to excuse myself also. Okay. Oh, I'll go with. You. Oh no, we need to have at least three. Oh. <laughs> Sit down. You gotta wait. I you have to wait. Taken a five minute recess. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and toss up. <laughs> Cancel. Caroline, what do they consider one way pairs? Okay, so that would be, because um, we have such narrow right-of-way, it would be if you turned, and it's also hard because we're not on a strict grid, but in a strict grid system, you would have oh, ones the, going this way and ones right, going yeah. that way. Okay, yeah, they did that a lot up okay. north, streets that used to be two-way because the parking constraints, Yeah. you would almost never get side-by-side mm. -side vehicle passage. Oops. Right in the yard. <laughs> Do you like a butterscotch? Oh, or not a butterscotch? A Werther's. Werther's original. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, no, thank you. <sighs> Pat, I'll throw one at you. If you <laughs> <like>. <laughs> <laughs> Hands. They're really good in vodka. <laughs> what? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so mm. <laughs> it makes caramel, but like the big thing ball. Wait, you put it in the dishwasher, like, neck you up. Just, yeah, yeah, you just to you know, heat it. Tie, tie yeah. it to heat it to melt it. Oh, you put the cap on it. Yeah, put the cap on it, it'll melt the <laughs> caramels in the vodka. I the vodka's mm. still in the vodka. Mm -hmm. I never like, would have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you afterwards on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? No, I just, you just got a, a caramel. <laughs> oh, the Werther's. Yeah, vodka. <laughs> but I just spit like upstairs. <laughs> Would you like Werther's? I'll treat you. Agreed.
if everyone's ready to move beyond objective 1.2 and on to objective 1.3. So that, like that little piece of distant we were just talking example. about, like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, downtown Tarpon is a grid yeah. system. Policy 1.3.4, preserve existing alleys and work to create new alleys within the MMTD. So within memory on this board, two to three years ago, this board voted to vacate, if not the entire alley, at least most of it, because that alley had been abandoned or unused, reasonably close to here, like right over there. And because the new owners were like, hey, there's this, it wasn't an alley at that point. So I bring that up because it, it strikes me as curious as here we're <coughs> codifying it as a policy, but yet just recently this board allowed a vacation of said alley. And although it was convenient and it kind of made sense, it appears that we're at odds with what we've actually done and what the policy may be. Which policy? So this is moving in. One dot three dot three. Ver mm -hmm. No, dot four. Sorry. Three, four. One yeah. three four. And that's a that's a legacy policy. So the MMTD and the smart code very much relies on and in order for the I don't call them design standards, but for the form based standards of the smart code to work. There's, there's requirements in there that if there's an alley available, doesn't mean it's actually improved, but if you have a platted alley that's, uh, you know, that your first priority is to take your access, if let's say you're building an infill residential house, is to take that access off of the alley. So that's why this, this policy is in there. Um, if you have a situation where it's just simply not feasible, then, and I don't, I don't know the situation around which one of one we're talking about right now, so I'm not ringing up, but the, then, then yes, you can, you know, there's really no reason not to vacate them, get them turned over. Sometimes they're, they're wet, you know, they've got, sometimes, you know, they have wetlands in the rear of them, they're not functional anyway. Um, so, but yeah, the overall policy is to is to preserve those within that smart code operating area, which is kind of coterminous. MMTD is a little bigger than that, to preserve that that future use from a redevelopment perspective, because it's you know you get a much better walkable environment when you don't have curb cuts, you know, into every driveway, you know, crossing every sidewalk. Um, so it's it's a it's a form based code preference. I was only bringing it up that I grew up in a neighborhood with alleys. I'm an alley fan. Not everyone is kind of an alley cat, actually. So um, it just struck me as odd that this board had recently mm -hmm. voted to vacate. And in fact, it wasn't that long ago we voted to vacate another alley. And what struck me as odd is not the alley portion of it, but of course, when they are vacated, then that property is distributed in most cases, equally to both property owners, and that strikes me as a gift mm -hmm. that not all the residents of the community get to take part of. Mm -hmm. There was one in particular that was very generous gift that we gave to a developer, but Maybe. I'll leave that alone. Yeah. Just meaning that, yeah. hey, we're giving away city sure. land to someone mm -hmm. else, so. First choice I, would be to keep it. <laughs> right, 
So I think that if this policy was a legacy policy and it had been brought to the board at that time, we probably would not have vacated that alley. And it, again, it, it's it just is. right mm. over there where these undeveloped One, lots three, four, and they might be wetlands. Mm. We just said, sure, you want it, we'll give it to you. Trying to figure, I'm trying to remember which 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 project you're talking about. But now that now that it's definitely, is there any, is what, which project? So if we're supposed to save them, we'll save them. Yeah. It was it was, they, they were all undeveloped, and so it was just single family residential. Mm -hmm. And there's only about three houses there now, and mm -hmm. we've got to be about three years back, and. Oh, it well, allowed no. that residents to dive deeper into their lot because it reduced sure. that rear setback sure. by X number of feet. So one of the things I will point out about the previous language um, is that it was previously specific to the CRA area. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure whether or not the property that, that you're referencing was within right. the CRA area. And it's being revised to outings within the MMTD. It was specific to the CRA, which is a smaller area mm -hmm. than. What what made it? What what? Why did you want to consider changing it from CRA to? The, so the, I wish we, we should have had a boundary map for the MMTD. To show I was. You what that was. <laughs> I apologize. It's really that. hard for me to imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just put an asterisk on that one. Maybe we'd we can we can read. Yeah, but but in a nutshell, the oh okay. There you go. Oh, Patricia, you're amazing. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me. So, and those are all alleys. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't now have Now I understand any. what we wanted to. Um, but basically, if I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember, it, it essentially goes from, like, uh, Huey, for the, so Huey North yeah, South it doesn't go all the way over there. No. Um, the but it encompasses that's, all the sponge docks. The and I think yeah. it goes south to Klosterman. Okay. So it's kind of like the oh, old, the, the traditional city. old. Well, it doesn't. Well, basically, it's you know the the more <laughs> suburban west half of the city okay. is not in it. So it's kind of that old, you know, original platted area of Have the city streets. between 19 <laughs> and the bayous. Okay. And so, the, where, and where traditionally you did have alleys platted, and so they're whether they're used or not. Um, so, so in some instances, you know, you know, application of that policy, you really kind of have to take into effect the idea of the consideration of if every house on the on that on a particular street is already developed with a front loading garage, uh, you know, preserving the alley may be lost at that point, you know, unless there's some other use that we want for it. So. You know, I, I don't know that it's a hard and fast like anything. Um, well, originally, the, weren't they all designed to be like street fronts and pushed mm -hmm. towards the front so they mm -hmm. were entered? From right. The I mean, that's what the intent was. Um, but you know, we you know we get pushed back today, even in you know in the in the MMTD in the CRA in the Smart Code area when we tell a developer that's trying to do an infill residential home. You got an alley there. You've got to rear load it and pull it, pull the building to the street. Well, that's not what my clients want. And I'm like, well, uh, you know, uh, what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> I mean, that's you know, that's we're trying to promote that walkable, you know, neo traditional, if you will, you know, street frontage and development pattern that we had going back to the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. So that's what was there, and we're, we want to keep it. So yes. Thank you. Go. Um, I want to talk about 1.3.7. And it's only, if you read it, it talks about freight and trucking. But I'd like to have some discussion between us about what I see as a continuing health and safety and growing issue with congestion. Mm -hmm. And that is, is there a way for us to either create a policy or modify this policy that relates to Amazon... FedEx, UPS, uh, all stopping in the middle of the road, mm. yeah. and and that right now, if we did that ourselves, we'd get a ticket. That's called that's called a careless driving. Mm -hmm. And how can we either modify this language or create a policy that should be considered about that? I thought they, they were talking about the automated deliveries. 
And not just like the drones, but other... It um, could be, but right now, until they do that, like they're that. all parking right now in the middle of the road here. Mm -hmm. And it's something we need to, we should be considering on behalf of the city and the citizens. I, this might be one of those, a policy that's, you know, a policy to evaluate a policy type of thing. And, you know, I, I don't know that we can, like, on an off of the cuff say we need to do this. I think what we probably would, you know, you know, establish a, you know, a, you know can we look a, and a see what other cities are doing? Yeah. If this I mean, is even a, because to me, it's a this is a, a, a national issue. It's not just us, but maybe there is something someone else is doing. But it it is creating. I mean, if post office, if the UPS, USPS, whatever, it pulls over and puts mail in our mailbox right. and they get out of the road, then why can't Amazon right. Right, <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> And put and we can put, and it may mean that we put a place for them to put our packages, or they pull over by the mailbox and they go up and put it on our doorstep. But right now they park in the road, mm -hmm. and there are times that they have more than one box and they're there for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. I really feel like that's more of an enforcement yeah. issue. Yeah, but Does if you don't have a policy that crawls the fr but see, I right now we have something that talks about evaluate freight truck routing alternatives. That's actually, it's an action saying, city, mm -hmm. do something about evaluating this and come up with a recommendation. I'm just saying, why don't we have a, another type item like this that does that? Evaluate mm -hmm. and make well, this recommendation. And also, which I've noticed too, is that the yellow lines on the road where you're not supposed to park, I don't think have been repainted for like 30 mm. years. <laughs> okay. And I know because there's, there's in front of my house. <laughs> Um, so and that's, but it. part of it is there's no parking signs, but like there's, there's other places that should have no parking signs too. And so even just something like that right there. I mean, I don't think any of those have been updated for years either. Mm -hmm. And people don't even ignore, like, it's like, yeah. it's, it's an old sign that I don't even see it either because it's been there since I mean, forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And look what the sponge stock, well, look what the city did for the benefit of the sponge stocks. They said, you know what? Trucks aren't going to come between these hours. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to come up with something. Mm -hmm. that addresses this in my opinion. Even if a cassette, it just says evaluate. Mm -hmm. Let's have something that says we're going to evaluate these, you know, what do you call them? You, is there a name for them, or do we actually spell out their or name? Or even if we already have these rules, just to reinforce them and, like, mm -hmm. update them, because I think they already exist where people can't park there, so, but it's no way of... Um, yeah. Um, I mean, my first thought would be to add on to this particular policy, you know, evaluate freight truck and other alternative and, well i would say and uh the and sign delivery the service right. yes delivery other service, other yeah. types of delivery routing service. and parking alternatives yes there you go yeah that's good if if i and could you make a good point too regina because then you by keeping that last part mm -hmm. alternatives through technology and then what you just said about mm -hmm. technology it would force some of those to start looking at alternative delivery methods. Well, I, mm -hmm. I feel like there was something, mm -hmm. I feel like there was last legislative session, and I was trying to see if I could find it, a proposed bill regarding electric delivery vehicles and like the use, the use of mopeds and scooters and things like that for, mm -hmm. in I lieu would. of the big Amazon trucks. Yeah. Now, the Amazon trucks are now using electric vehicles, right. but they're just as big. Right. Actually, they're bigger now, so they stay on the road. <laughs> What I'm seeing are a lot more though are are the the small like the minivans doing that you know last mile delivery. I know during holiday season in the past they've contacted us about you know they would set up like a temporary hub almost like a pod, yeah. and then they would distribute from there. So like during peak season and stuff, I don't know if they're still doing that. You know that what's interesting is all of them, or at least I say the majority of them. Have, when they make their deliveries, they're making them to residentials. Now, you've got the yeah. big FedEx that are going to the businesses, but mm -hmm. they usually have those alleys yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. But those that are going to the residents, mm -hmm. most all of them have driveways, but they won't go in them because they don't want they don't want to be tied up having to back out of that mm -hmm. driveway yeah. to get into the traffic. So what they do is they block the traffic. Park on the street. Yeah. 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 Well, my yeah. mailbox is all the way up at my door, so even my mailman has to come to my door. <laughs> That's good. Some extra Everybody's got to come to my door. <laughs> Where I live, it's a... Uh, it's a private little road, and it's cul-de-sacs. It's cul-de-sacs. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many, I would say three times this year so far, those Amazon trucks, we have a cul-de-sac that has stones 
that are like in about two or three feet around the circle mm. have ended up in the middle of our circle on top of those stones. <laughs> they they Bad fly. Drivers, they yeah. fly those big trucks and then they lose control. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, a lot of that, unfortunately, is just, you know, opportunistic and, you know, yeah. there just aren't enough police officers anywhere to be able to police that. Um, well, they wouldn't do it in a private area anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, yeah. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I'm sure it's happening everywhere. I mean, so they're we'll just... make a revision to that. Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll do no, the no, additive. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But before we walk away from that, since policy 1.3.7 was new, what was the Driving impetus, that. your word, of, um, of including that? I like it, but I just wanted to hear maybe more what you were actually thinking of that concept. Um, I, I, some of it I think is, you know, Nick hit on is, you know, we just, we have, you know, we have problems downtown, we have problems at the docks, we have, and so it's always kind of been an open, ongoing problem, you know, is it unreasonable to require businesses you know, to get their deliveries. For, so they're, 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 unfortunately, they're kind of caught in the middle, too. It's like, okay, I need, you know, 2,000 pounds of flour delivered to my bakery. Right. Well, that's coming in on a big truck because they're, that's the problem. And so they, because they got, you know, 1,500 of those de deliveries that they got to make in Pinellas County. So everybody's defaulting to the largest vehicles to do these deliveries. And so then they come down, like you said, and they park on Doe Deck and they, you know, or wherever. And they, so that you, we have those, I mean, I came, I was, I went and I was coming up Safford Avenue and there was a semi trailer parked on the trail. <laughs> it, I mean, in the mid, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I just about lost my mind. I mean, I'm just like, what are you doing? I mean, that's the kind of, so <coughs> I, I don't, it, this is a really hard thing to, to regulate. And so I, so I think it was something that we recognize as an ongoing problem. I think it probably picks up a lot of things. I think so that it's, it's a, you know, what can we do? What are other places doing? Is there a way to, you know, can you, if we adopt a local ordinance that says deliveries can only take place in certain hours or you can't exceed a certain vehicle size or weight or whatever, you know, what are those options? So it was meant to kind of look at it at, from a holistic standpoint. Yeah, We've got what? We, routes as well. Streets as well. Yeah, yeah. routes. Yeah, well, that's you, got live oak, you got Live Oak. You've got now mirrors that are two the, the good routes. The damage mm -hmm. aspect is we have streets and stormwater. Uh, identify where people hop the curb. The yeah. trail and the sidewalk are not made to support those trucks. Yeah. They get cracked, they get broken, and so we end up having to put them on our list of things. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the reason for that. For those yep. trucks that go down to Decanese, they shouldn't ever be on like Grand. There's no reason for them to be there, but they'll end up there and <laughs> then they can't turn on right. like Hope and yeah. yeah. So how, how does one, since this obviously is actually a very serious issue that yeah. has been around, how, how do you move it away from, it's, it's, it's a good objective, it's a good policy, but it it, it seems to me, it, it, it's it, maybe not at the right place. Could it be sprinkled somewhere else and move it to traffic enforcement so that there's a more proactive, or does it need to move to an entire zone of its own, like a special area plan? Well, I, I think it's something that would be part of that mobility segment. plan. And so, I, I mean, I think it's something that we need to incorporate into the overall M update of the MMTD. <clears throat> you know, when we do that, that that's a planning process that's going to have to take place. And we, perfect segue, because that's what I was going to, I wanted to bring up an idea. So, logistics, having a logistic facility location in the city that allows for these vehicles to stage mm -hmm. and unload. And what perfect location than the waste management area? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of land there, and mm -hmm. you've got yeah. now mirrors for them to come in on. Yeah. They stage their, and then now the smaller vehicles of the merchants go pick up their merchandise and take it to them. And so I think there should be something to look at with regards to, to taking advantage, because that, that becomes income generating for the city. Yeah. Is, is that 
in some strange way part of that multimodal uh, circular location that we were referring to about six pages back where there's a hub of whether it's pedestrian traffic or tourist traffic and then there's a section for commercial traffic we're way out could, there you on know the that could I mean right yeah, uh, yeah you know I mean could be. yeah it could be you know yeah. I think all that's of these part are, of that yeah. sprinkle <laughs> <laughs> you know that guy, that meme. That is <laughs> so I, I think you know. I think all of this you know gets captured through that MMTD you know update and planning process that clearly needs to happen. I think that's. I think all these things are things we need to be pushing toward and pursuing in the future. Is there a? Uh, I know it's going bold here, but if we modif as we're going to modify 137 to include the alternative or mm -hmm. other service, uh, mm -hmm. how about we add language about a location for them to stage the concept? To consider that. Alternatives to technology, signage to reduce conflicts and infrastructure damage, and potential commercial staging facilities. Yeah. Slash areas. There you go. All right. <laughs> Objective 1.4. Maybe this is throughout this 1.4 and other areas in this in this obje in these objectives, but when when I look at um, just 1.4.4, work cooperatively with Forward Pinellas, Pinellas County, and other local governments. Do we are we intentionally leaving out Pasco County because we abut Pasco County? In this for instance, the, we are. <laughs> yeah, for this for this particular one, we are because it is a Pinellas County centric. The the the, the, the multimodal impact fee ordinance is okay. Pinellas County. What about in the other areas? Because I seem to think we talk about Pinellas County, and because we butt to Pinellas County on the on the south end of us. But should we ever be saying something about Pasco County because we have not, city property to the north? Not not in this. Not instance. in this one here. Not in this particular. Not in this instance. Yeah, because the, the, it is because it is a multi, Pinellas County multimodal impact. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah. Now I understand that. Yeah. But I'm saying, I, I hear what you're saying. What I've been reading all these in all these, mm. Pasco County doesn't seem to be get brought up as a as another agency other than saying mm -hmm. other agency. So that, we do we do refer to Pasco County Public Transportation. Maybe do do a word search for Pasco County on all of this and see how many times. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're bringing up a valid point. There are other th there are some things that we yeah, should coordinate we, we with should, Pasco yeah, County. Yeah, because they could it could be a benefit to us. Plus, it also can help control events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. It. Do these objectives and policies <coughs> take into account or look towards facilitating transportation? Because what I've noticed, my uneducated observations, is the traffic coming from to and from Pasco to Tarpon, Palm Harbor, Clearwater. I mean, they're they're coming south mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from home. Mm -hmm. And then they're going back north to home at the end of the day, and it's massive yep. traffic. Is there any way to coordinate something that's multi-county or that will? So that is, there. there is coordination on a regional basis between PSTA, Pasco, Hillsborough, I mean. Yes. So some are coming from Hillsborough, coming yeah. back to Pinellas County. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, and I think um, the new regional MPO <coughs> that things like that might get done better. But there is there's a tri there's there was a tri county meeting, mm. um, so that 
yeah. Um, I mean, we, yeah, you're absolutely 100% right. If you look at in migration and out migration on a daily basis, yes. they're all coming in and then they all go out. And it's like, if you could just put a toll road at the, you know, to the north, maybe, you know, but. Be wealthy. <laughs> um, and that's, that, unfortunately, that's, you know, that's the nature of yeah. what, you know, Pasco unfortunately has a lot of land and a lot of places to build and and it's you see it <laughs> it's not uh, not pretty and and startlingly in the number of, uh, so many of them just still seem to work in in Pinellas <laughs> County you know so it's that drive to you qualify because of the cost of housing so That's the first time I heard that. Drive to drive qualify. to qualify. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard that before. You did? No, I have not. Oh, me yeah. either. Yeah, it's in, the, in the mortgage <laughs> business, you know, drive to qualify. One point four point one one. Development projects must contribute their fair share. <laughs> I I love the sentence, but. Would their fair share be, who decides their fair share? Did I move ahead too far? No, no, that's actually no, good. Their fair fine. share in accordance yeah. with section so-and-so, so-and-so of the I, fair share that's standards. That's got to be in yeah. coordination with the I actually got that right. Impact. Okay. <laughs> that was good. Like, I mean, we're all in fair on their share? fair share, yeah. but. I need, to, uh, I need to find this one because yeah. there was something specific yeah. about that specifically. Didn't we run across 11. that before in something? Okay. Well, we don't have to like delineate it at this moment, but if you would there's, just underline that really and disproportionate fair share. Yeah, it's the proportion fair share program. Well, there is one there on fair share twelve. I mean one for twelve, there's a proportionate fair share program. Oh, hello. So there is a program for oh, fair share. Oh, there it was if oh. I had just gone forward. <clears throat> Is that for develop think, yeah. developers to participate in the fair share program? Yeah. There it goes. It even so defines fair shares based on the proportion of net, net external, external trips. Yeah. So should policy 1.4.11 and policy 1.4.12 either be combined or reversed? Flip or flop them. Don't. Yeah. Make don't 12, they end at the same 11 result? And 11, yeah. 12. 12 should be 11. Mm -hmm. 11 should be 12. Mm -hmm. Because continue to implement a goal and to, to keep keep it going, and then down below, if you put eleven to twelve, then it talks about developed projects must contribute their. So fish. all right, so a little 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 history here, firing up the wayback machine. When when the MMTD was put in was we we had a multimodal quality of service report study done that identified. Sidewalk segments, road segments, um, bicycle facilities. It, 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 it identified a, a, a list of capital needs. And so what was supposed to happen, and the board never fully adopted a, a requirement to require. In it. So it, it was in addition. So, the, okay, I got to gotta back up. The the Pinellas County Multimodal Impact Fee Ordinance has two schedules. They have a downtown schedule, which are reduced fees for transportation impact fees for new development. And then you have your general schedule, which is everything else. So our CRA and the sponge docks is in the reduced fee schedule. So if I build a house in you know, the downtown somewhere, my, multi, my, my transportation or my multimodal impact fee is less than if it was somewhere outside of that district. So when we put the MMTD in place, and they had to, again, this was in, that was part of a concurrency management system then. So we were, we identified a list of capital improvements, and then there was a dollar figure tied back to trip generation, net increase in trip generation that we could apply to a developer when they came in. So. It basically, it was a second pay and go. In addition to your Pinellas County multimodal impact fee, you either had to pay a fee 
within the MMTD, or you could actually do an equivalent project. So we actually got some sidewalk segments improved and things like that that were not really adjacent to a particular project, but you could pick something. So those were kind of negotiated. And then all of that, candidly, has just kind of evaporated. Mm. So... And it, and we, we brought an ordinance to the board way back when and said we want to officially, or, by ordinance, adopt this. The board was not willing to at that point in time. And so it's kind of just been in basically in a state of limbo. So that's what these policies were originally developed for. Um, how we continue to do that moving forward or maybe revive that, again, as part of the update to the MMTD, you know, because you don't, you, you can't, because we don't have concurrency per se anymore, you know, we don't have that tool. So it has to be a political decision or a policy decision, I should say, mm -hmm. to say, okay, we still have this list of deficiencies inside this multimodal transportation district that um, developers are going to pay for in addition to your regular multimodal impact fees through Pinellas County. And so that that was long-winded, I apologize, but oh. hopefully it gave you a little context and history of where these came from. So that does need to be then adopted and implemented into your LDC? Uh, in some way or ordinance okay. or something, yeah. yes, I would say so, if we're going to continue to try, if we want to try, try to do that. Okay. Um, so that policy development project must contribute their fair share towards pedestrian, bike, and transit facilities. I think we probably need to, you know, again, as part of the MMTD update, you know, evaluate uh, capital projects necessary, create a per trip fee, that kind of thing. We can, we can kind of roll back to some of the language that was before, but we have to have an implementing policy to, or an ordinance or something to, to push that back into place. So That all made perfect sense. Gosh. It really did. Okay. I, I stayed with you the whole time. <laughs> it also explains why we're missing so many sidewalks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you give it more teeth if I were to encourage perhaps even strengthen it? Because it sounded to me that there is an existing policy or ordinance required by Pinellas County that we're in fact deficient of. No, that one we're, no. no. no I didn't we, hear it that we way. We absolutely, you, you know, we absolutely abide by the Pinellas County multimodal impact <laughs> Mm -hmm. requirements okay and we have we have a downtown schedule we have, we have an area that it applies to and then we have, everything else goes to schedule b anytime a building permit comes through we evaluate every building permit every development for you know does it you know if it's new development it obviously has to have it has an impact fee if it's a redevelopment we look at it on the net increase um so that we make sure that we're still collecting those those fees and those go into a special transportation fund so if it wasn't the fee side if it was the lack of the ordinance being adopted by the boc mm -hmm. is, is there a way that we can move that a step forward i know that we have no power in that but is there a way that within this policies that you're writing right now that we could reflect back and encourage I, yeah that policy that, exactly i think that's what that we, wanted, we would like to do my my only question with that with that though is is that essentially adopting a second transportation impact fee? It, it's a multimodal impact fee, yes, um, or a mobility fee. Um, actually, I think we is, called it multimodal impact. Is fee. there any exclusivity with the MPO impact fee? As so I, it's I not haven't actually read it in a long through. Time. It's it's. <clears throat> it's the reason why we need this is because <laughs> the the county uh, impact fee multi doesn't really account for the impacts that are created. Mm. Ah. It's, uh, we have, Pinellas County has some of the lowest okay. it's, and the see. most need. So right. there's an additional need here. And so that's why on the previous okay. one, we said, you know, let's work with Forward Connect Pinellas and everybody else to update that the, the county ordinance. And then, and then, and then bridge the gap with the local. Yeah. Okay. So there is a deficiency that's not being met. So and we so we really do need to you know we need to evaluate it you know again it's it was around three things it was around you know bicycle quality of service pedestrian sidewalk quality of service mobility or um, transit quality of service or lack thereof so 
you know, there was a whole list of, and, and, and then roadway connections that still needed to be made. We've actually made a lot of progress on that. Um, you know, Mango going through was, you know, Mirrors Mango connection was one, Safford was one. So there's, there's actually been a lot of projects that have been done that, um, you know, we can check off, but it's the other, you know, more mobility, you know, transit circulator, those trying to find funds and, you know, for those types of improvements and things. So I think, I think, you know, the update needs to be done and then there needs to be an ordinance to implement mm -hmm. a fee structure to fund those improvements on, for the long haul. Would that exact verbiage be appropriate to install in one mm -hmm. of these policies or is that? I think policy 1.4.11 just needs to be expanded again and we'll, we can, we can, I hear, yeah, I think we're all in agreement of what we need, what we want to do, so. Yeah, I feel like the amount of development that's happened has not been proportionate to <laughs> the, uh, our traffic situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? RE objective 1.4? No. Okay, to move on to objective 1.5? I have a question about 1.5.3. It says discourage development of low density residential projects in locations that will increase urban sprawl and the dependency on the personal automobile. Yeah, I don't like that either, but it looks like it's a statutory requirement. It is. <laughs> I believe it is, yeah. It is. So yeah. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, and you know, and it's one of those things that's it's like, it's, actually more, it's actually more it's actually more applicable to a place like Pasco County. Yeah. Where you yeah, go out right? in the middle of a ranch and you put in, you know, five thousand single family homes and one choke point onto it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it's really meant to discourage. Inside of our city it's a little it's just a little different. We just don't really have right. you know, that's what it really is is meant but to discourage. But it's funny because those are the cars that are congesting us are, are theirs. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> short, yeah. a short objective section. Yeah. Uh, is everyone comfortable moving on to goal two? Yes. Yes. Goal two. Um, there's Pasco County, Nick. There's some gaps in the Pasco County. <laughs> so when, skipping through one, two, one, one, two, three, four. Well, actually, I, I do. Two, two, one, two, one, three. Coordinate with Pinellas County and DOT to connect existing and future deficiencies on county and state roadways. Doesn't Pasco County? Apply to that too, on our north end. No, sir, I don't think there's any harm there. Yeah. 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 And so then I would yeah. continue That's on nice. to the next page where we talk about Pasco County, and there's so at, at um, two one eight coordinate with Pinellas County, and I'm saying Pasco mm -hmm. County and DOT during the design phase of construction mm -hmm. reconstruction, but I'm also going to ask. Should we? I know what we're, it's saying for us to coordinate with them on their design and construction and resurfacing. Somehow, I brought it up last week. <laughs> we make them coordinate with us. <laughs> oh no, that we're excluding utility agencies. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. you did. And yeah. they're a critical component to all the construction projects. Mm -hmm. So how do we integrate them into certain ones like this? Because to me. They should be involved. You're wanting to know about the DOTs <coughs> and the Pinellas County uh, coordinate with them. How do we make sure that they're, co I, and I do know that DOT mm -hmm. would be coordinating with utilities. Pinellas County would be coordinating with utilities. But would you be involved in seeing that? Mm. All you would see is their design. Right. And if they had, if they had extensive relocations to be done by the utilities, 
you wouldn't know about it till it actually came, unless your people are reviewing the, their mm -hmm. phase plans, but then it would have to be your utility people. I mean, I think the only thing that we, we kind of get the, that we do get to review kind of by default, or is if it's our right of way. Yes, but then when they're coming into we, a, know, if Pinal, if Pin, uh, Alter 19, and Pasco County's doing something to Alter 19, <laughs> And they're coordinating, and they're keeping you in the loop, but you're not really getting... Uh, I know you would get their plans to review the phase plans, but there's someone looking at them here to look at the utility. What's happening to the utilities that are going to impact moving their facilities on that corridor that are going to impact you on your road that you haven't even done anything with? So somehow we got to work in the language that, that at least on all of this section that mm -hmm. deals with intergovernmental agencies, mm -hmm. that we have language that, that the utility shall be, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how much we can compel another, like Pasco County, to to share. Well, they share their yeah. drawings. If they're, yeah. if they're doing design, and, and that's and that's gonna end at Pasco County, Pinellas County, mm -hmm. they're, they're coordinating with, with they're, they're coordinating with Pinellas County, they should also be coordinating with the city of Tarpon Springs, because it falls into the city limit of Tarpon yeah, Springs. Yeah. But just I assume that's happening. Mm, yeah, just how um, somehow we have to work. So, well, I'm 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 having a little trouble understanding. So, um, for instance, like for Anclote Road, that's a Pinellas County yep. project that they're working on right now. When they're done with their preliminary engineering report, you know, I you're seeing it. I will re review it and project admin mm -hmm. will we'll review it. And so that'll have like utilities, re like probably like a 30% design. Yeah, they'll have, they'll have whatever utility company furnish something. It's when you start to get into the 60, the 90 and 100% that you start to, you should be getting their plans for review. The city would get them and yeah. go to the city engineer and the city engineer has got to determine, okay, yeah. let me s send that to, Utilities, because utilities need to see what's happening with the utility companies that are bringing their facilities and stopping them. You know, if they stop, if, if, if Duke Energy stopped their power lines adjustments and it happens to now come in, into Pinellas County and, and Tarpon Springs, it actually could impact us here in Tarpon. And that's why I'm, I'm not seeing a, a thing that talks about that we did it in that one interagency. So you, you know, we're going to make those right. changes. Right, right. But just look at this section and see if there's, how do you word language in like that to, to or even talk to your, um, you know, is it Bill, Bill Roberts or Bob Roberts? Uh, right. um, and ask them what what do they get when they do get Rob, review Bill of Roberts. plans. So they, don't, don't lose sight of what the objective is. Yes, I so did. So it's really to coordinate to ensure existing and proposed development intensity, housing, and employment patterns are consistent with transportation facilities that serve those areas. Is that the statement? Where are you reading that? I'm, that's the objective, the, the end of objective 2.1. So it, it's really about, you know, consistency with... Oh, to ensure that existing and, and proposed and development yeah. intensity, housing, but employment. But to your point, you know, let us... We'll, we yeah. can yeah. pick up utility providers as well somehow yeah. in this. And you may not if it's that, but, yeah. but it's, yeah, that's all I had. Any other comments under goal two? Hmm. Well, then we'll close goal two, and it appears the end of the transportation element. Before we move on to another topic, I would like to say that I thought that that was a great package. And I genuinely appreciate some of the new additions in regards to um, the emphasis on multimodal, which is bicycle and pedestrian. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we've got a healthier uh, package than we had before. Do we have time? To, it's our goal to end at eight, or what is our goal? I, I'm. How did what did we end last time, last Monday? Eight o'clock. Uh, you you eight were it was around eight o'clock. We we did, but at the same time, um, I would think that Miss McNeese and perhaps Miss Vincent has a target. We we have fixed dates ahead of us, and perhaps a work schedule that maybe we need to meet. So if it is critical that we move on and bite some more off, uh, I'll follow the lead of staff to make sure that we 
meet our goals? Mm -hmm. um, maybe let's try, I think lifelong learning, which is the old public schools facility element we can probably knock out yep. pretty quickly. And then plan administration, I just honestly don't know how much y'all want to dig into that. So and that's something that there's always been this plan administration element, but I don't think anybody's ever really seen it except for a few staff people through the, you know, the from the 1990s forward. So we're we're daylighting that mm -hmm. element and uh, bringing it, you know, as part of the review. So, um, but let's let's uh, let's. So my question, actually, on this, because I know by statute you're supposed to. I know we kind of briefly talked about it. Have the school board member yeah. as mm. part of oh. your your local planning agency. Yeah. Um, and and I know just from other communities that sometimes that is like pulling teeth yeah. to get them to send someone or I don't know if you could even just send them this mm -hmm. and ask for comments or something like that. I don't know is Marshall which still one your delegate is. Is it Marshall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So at least send it so you, you can say right. you sent it, got the comments, invited them to participate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So are we going to continue? even without the school board member present. It's going to be forwarded yep. to them electronically. Yep. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's a good in context. So this is one of those elements that is no longer required by recent by state mm -hmm. statute. What is no longer required? It's, it's no longer a required statutory. It's a yeah, this it's whole thing? Optional. It's optional. So, optional. So but we think it's... Story. And I think that that was something that really came yeah. through from the public engagement was some mm -hmm. some concerns about you know vocational training and educational opportunities in town. So we've kind of shifted the focus of this from just planning for K through five and making sure that you know mm -hmm. there's facilities to looking at a little broader from a whole a little more holistic. Um, and they did the same thing with uh, you know. Pinellas County too. They really took a different shift. Now we still coordinate with the schools on so any you know any time that we have development happening that has residential component, we mm -hmm. we we coordinate with the school district to make sure they're aware so that they can plan for the future. But at the end of the day, <laughs> we're not uh, our our school needs are from just like new new space are pretty minimal in the county because of. It's just not a lot of population. Is this something that is required for us to? No. The, the, you, do, you do not. The public schools facilities element is what it used to be called. Is no longer a required element under state statute. We think, so we've retooled this into something that we think is good to have, which we're calling a lifelong learning element. So. Yeah. What is still required is the interlocal agreement, which yeah. you have. Yeah. And it is talked about in here. And it was talked about in your intergovernmental you looked at last time. So that's still required. The interlocal agreement so we're, with the we're kind of spreading out and yes. reaching out and finding new, new, new things to do, right? Yes. W okay. Would we so consider? Because you brought it up. I'll let you go. Well, so I have a, a, a little bit of a study I did on my own that might kind of actually factor into this. Um, so at the Tarpon High East Lake game, it was extremely crowded, okay? <laughs> and um, I know we had not, we had done our original population, we had the original uh, projections that I guess last time, the last meeting were cut in half, but um, that have shown that, that the city has continuously grown in population, not, not just, not necessarily, you know, like extraordinarily growth, but um, I did look at the school at, at Tarpon High and over the past five years, the population has decreased by 18%, mm -hmm. mm. which is a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and if we didn't have our band program, that would be significantly less because that is the only program at our school that mm -hmm. actually brings students to it. And Because mm -hmm. and they're nationally almost in Right, but without right? that, it would just be the students that just like live in the area. And, right. the, and then I think we even have the choice schools. So they're... There hasn't really been other schools that have grown since in the five years. The same high schools have existed. And so that, to me, is not conducive with, and if this is something that we just consider with the other start, other, other parts of our planning and who's coming to this city <coughs> and who's moving here into these places, because it's not people with, with children. <laughs> and, it would, I mean, if, say if we don't have that band program, I don't even know if Tarpon High would exist in a few years, and 
the way that this pop if this, the city the city's clearly growing, but the school is not. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you know, and that's there's a lot of stuff way up here, you know, in yeah. terms of how where school funding goes and how it gets distributed from state, federal, you know, and you know what's given priority. So, and that's oh, well, not, there's nothing yeah. to do with who gets but, money as yeah, far as the band or any of this stuff like that. But I mean, the school in general is just that there's no. I just don't think there's any there's kids to go there. I mean, population wise, it's not families that are coming here. I just I don't know if that has anything to do with how this some of this is because I've never I didn't even know we had a mm. element like this that we could mm. look at. But I saw that they were talking looking at school enrollment projections and capital investment decisions. I think that's pretty much head on. Is are we are the projects and the development that we're encouraging? Is it going to encourage? Families. Uh, families and that, that our schools are going to continue <coughs> to exist because at this rate it doesn't look like that. I don't know if I have an answer for <laughs> you. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> I mean a, it is considering it, is, it it's not necessarily yeah, looking at this part. It's all the other stuff that sure. we're that we're doing that's going to change this. Right. It's not this. This is just meant if you look at this, be like, oh yeah, the numbers aren't good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I, you know, it, it's. At some point, you know, I mean, I think that's why we're we do want to have something like this. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, just saying, it, it, yeah. I didn't know if that was something like it seemed like relevant to. It's absolutely yeah. relevant to yeah you know, to you know, the you know, the future of the of the school systems. I mean, you know, absent you know things like tourism and things like that. You know, if you peel it back, one of the biggest drivers you know of people choosing to live in a given is place it, yeah, is the school schools, system. Yeah. You know, whether or not, you know, something like this can influence that, I mean, that might be pretty lofty, but but if they're, you know... Well, I mean, I almost mean more of, like, this in terms of being referred to on the, in the other, on the other, like, in the capital investment, like, that, that on the capital investment part, right? this is reference. Right. The lifelong learning, like, as a I don't know a strategy or something like to put to link this to that. You know what I mean? Because okay. I think this is more of a of the um, uh, the result of the decisions that we make in everything else, mm -hmm. not the, 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 the mm -hmm. these decisions we can't make because we can't make any decisions about the People school. Move here. Right. We can just evaluate and consider like the, the populations and, and the numbers right. and everything. But right. without this being, and I think in the other elements. Then it won't it won't be anything that they consider. <laughs> we'll just right. be looking at like, oh, look at the, look at all the decisions we made, how they've affected the school. <laughs> it doesn't really do anything, mm. except show us how the results. Well, let's go through this okay. and maybe some industrial education facility. There was a big push up north for developments not to impact <clears throat> the school system. So I'm just going to group, based on that conversation, just for review, we'll just take objective 1.1, objective 1.2, both, all under goal one, and then if there are any feedback or comments in regards to those two objectives. I have one. I think there's a natural segue, um, although the conversation was about uh, high school and lower, um, it's referred to here just as schools, and this would tie straight back to our college mm -hmm. that I'd like to refer to as our college. Mm -hmm. And that um, infrastructure and planning projects that might get mm -hmm. our college more um, yeah. included with our community, I think that there would be some positive outcomes with that. I think Don't know how three, that would be included there. I think goal three really talks about that, you know, um, a little bit older. It moves a little more toward workforce development, but it does talk about educational institutions. Um, but we can be more overt about that. There's quite a bit that came out. Yeah, there's schools coming here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so far. <clears throat> I think overt would be okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I think mm -hmm. as I, I continue to pull this, you know, it was just, it, as everyone reads, I'll just drone on in the background. I didn't know SPC was part of the city of Tarpon Springs. 
I graduated from SBC with a bachelor's degree in business management. I love that degree. My wife graduated from SPC with a BSN. My daughter is going to SPC right now, and I've got two more I'll probably put through there. It is a fine school system. Mm -hmm. I'm still deeply enrolled. You may not know this, but they are being led in a very vibrant direction right now. They, You know what, SPC, they actually have started a high school within the campus. Really? SPC Collegiate High School. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what's going on there right now. That's cool. And where I'm going to go with this is not so amazing. I'm going to just beat it again. We don't have a road that goes there. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Now. Look, I got a full-on laugh. I can see it now. It's going to be named after our... No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what we for. That's what we go for. <laughs> we don't, and we have... Wait, we've got the... It's... A thousand feet wide. It's actually a grand boulevard mm -hmm. with a fence at the end. <clears throat> okay, so <laughs> an, enough of that. But, uh, but that goes to that's the point more overt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That these need to be referenced in the other elements. Lifelong learning. <clears throat> yep. <sighs> oh God, that would be good. But the Nessie Highway. The Nessie Highway. It's well, or it could, it's, they could, it's they could name Greek a conference could room at the college. But, well, he's already going to that class. The Nessie room. room. The Nessie room. Yeah. Yeah. I, took, I took my statistics there. <laughs> under, I think we can add something under goal three, definitely, to that's more overt about the partnership with SPC. I think that's the appropriate place to put it. Like, I mean, we have Objective 3.2, enable the city's youth to access quality education and compete in the global economy. I think, you know, either a policy right under there with these that talks about, you know, that partnership. Can, um, can we use SPC overtly and just refer to them by name as as a partner? We have yeah. them in someplace yeah. else and just, just yeah, call it absolutely. out and say that's our partnership yeah. that we want to grow. <clears throat> can do that um i mean we may be even be able to i don't i don't know it i don't know anything about the um the program that you were just talking about i mean that might be something we might want to do a little investigating into St. Pete collegiate yeah that's where Zoe's going. That's where Zoe's going. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> on a billboard, it's yeah. my daughter's going to go there next right. year. Uh, uh, they, they even so have a new program that is so cutting edge. So I'll, I'll bore you just for ten more seconds. So. <clears throat> I have three daughters, and they went to PHU, all the one Carpenter Springs. It's just how it is. So one went to the medical program, fine. She's a nurse. She's 26. But I have one right now in the pharmacological program. Mm. They call it the pharmacy mm. program, which is fine. But there's a new program at SBC at their college that is about um, – using uh, advanced equipment within mm. the medical field. Yeah. Mm. This is right, it. Wow. right on the most cutting edge where young people can learn how to use these robotic devices. Biomedical in, engineering. There it is. Yeah. Right there at SPC. Yeah. It's such a gem. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, <coughs> we'll expand the, that yeah. objective 3.2 definitely. And yeah. Okay, we like that. Well, you took us all the way to goal three. Sorry, I was. No, uh, that's okay. Good. There's. I have nothing. There's yeah. a lot of reading. If anyone wanted to go on to to goal four. And Georgianne, you were just wanting to make sure that we have. Good I was hoping in the capital into... in the capital investment part, okay. if we could loop in because uh, okay. objective one and policy one and two, just considering the population in those capital decisions. Okay. I'm just worried if when Mr. Ford's not around, <laughs> what's going to happen to the band? <laughs> well, you know, it's to the, to the point of, to, you, know, the, you know, the school system owns that property there in, uh, off of West Klosterman. What is it, the... Mm. the and they wanted to sell the property because, oh, yeah. they don't, because there's no need for it now. Well, that's, that's, you know, and that's so that's sad. You know, I mean, that's yeah. There's no need for it, and you know, so you know, they, so yeah. There's types of you know long-term coordination issues. Both teams doing better. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> Consistency. You know, perhaps if there was a cutting edge swimming pool and swimming I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, 300,000, that's all we have. What is the status of that There was is a it? new, like a long I think, that, I think they got every, I think they I got swim. all the funding I, that they, they needed swimming, to, yeah. to buy it. Yeah. Okay. I was a swimmer. Yeah. No, they have to drive all the... We'd rather oh, have pickleball courts. Oh, wait a so minute. They Actually, don't have to no, drive their golf carts out to Palm Harbor. But our 16-year-olds can drive to yes, Palm Harbor. Yes, but then well. something wow. else happened, okay. I think, to save it. Because <laughs> it breaks <laughs> okay. my heart. So we're oh, still okay. in limbo. Only 300,000. Yeah. That's, that's we have a good swim team, too. I have a question. Right along that property, and maybe somebody here knows, <clears throat> it almost looks like... They did a cutback, like from the fence in. And I've seen it in some other spots too, around <coughs> Tarpon, where it's you know wooded or you know, it's all brown. It's cut back, but then there's brown looking on the foliage, and it it looks like it was sprayed. Yeah, it's probably yeah. sprayed. Yeah? yeah. They can do that. Yeah. yeah. Some type of match. I mean, yeah, some yeah. Form of management. Peppers. It could have been invasive species they were spraying yeah. to get rid of. Yeah. Okay. Brazilian pepper and yeah, other stuff that's just taking over. The Dominates. Yeah. Well, yeah, we have it next to where we live. That they are fast growing Brazilian peppers too. In Virginia, where I'm at, it's kudzu. Mm. It's kudzu. Kudzu is just taking over everything. Isn't it's that crazy. like a vine or? Yeah. 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 What part of Virginia? Near Roanoke. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any more uh, thoughts or comments on goal four or objective 4.1? Well, this is your safe access mm -hmm. <laughs> to SPC. <laughs> <laughs> Policy 4.1.4 determine priority for construction of sidewalks and crosswalks. I think under this objective is where you would, if you really wanted to collectively you know, push the issue of the connection with SPC, this would probably be the place to do it. Mm -hmm. The section four? Yes. Yeah, yeah, works for me. Can you put a separate policy, though, <laughs> that talks about the road? <laughs> yeah, I think you can. You okay, can put a policy in there. That I re recommended that on your behalf. Bless you. Bert. So I have a separate policy for the road. Really? Yeah. So she's going to put well, the language grants? in her. So do you, want, get, do you huh? want to call out the connection of distant... Specifically, or yes, just yes, yes, okay. yes, we do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I like where we're going. Like yeah. yeah. Direct multimodal. At we're, we're we're in a mind melt. That's that, good. That, that is superseding and saying we're we're looking for a connection of of okay. Saint Petersburg College. Not just that there needs to be a connection, and not that it and, and it's important that safety vehicles get through there. But we're re really looking for that connection between SBC and the students that need it most. Mm -hmm. Well said. Well said. We will develop said policy. Cool. All right. Okay. Eight o'clock. Well then, if no one has any more comments, that would mean that we successfully got through two sections under the guidance of staff, the end of lifelong learning element. And unless there were any objections, I would adjourn that meeting at 801. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Good meeting. Very productive. These have been good. We should add this to the Life collection of other. 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you taking these again or no? No. I don't know. I, what? I would never have.